Let me preface this with some information about myself. I'm currently finishing my last year of undergrad. I'm going to school to be a teacher, so I'm doing my student teaching at a high school. I also have a job in my university's games room. Finally, I am engaged to be married, and I'll probably reference my fiancé a couple times. I'm at work writing this, so please excuse me if it seems rushed. I have only limited time. Early this afternoon, shortly after school let out for the weekend, I received a text message from an unknown number. The number had the area code for my region, but I don't have it registered in my phone. I figure one of my students somehow got my phone number through Facebook or something. I chalked it up to a student playing a prank, but the message was still unsettling. The message read, Don't go to work tonight. My first response was to try and message back. I asked who I was talking to, but the message failed to send. I tried a couple more times, and even texted a friend to make sure my phone was working properly. No problems there. I had complained to some students about having to work late, so I figured they were just messing with me. I thought about all the possible reasons not to go to work, but none of them seemed significant. Yeah, the late shift sucks, especially when you wake up around 5.30 each morning. Regardless, I ignored the message. Around 8.30 p.m., I started getting ready to go to work. I changed out of my comfortable clothes into my work uniform. As I pulled my obnoxiously colored sky blue polo shirt over my head, my phone buzzed. I see you aren't listening. You need to stay home. Please. I froze, looking at the screen. I looked to my fiancé to see if this was some elaborate joke, but she never lifted her head from her organic chemistry book. I felt myself growing warm. I was frustrated about being part of this joke. I thought about mentioning the messages to my fiancé, but I knew she was really busy with her final exams coming. She doesn't like me bothering her when she's working anyway. I grabbed my bag, kissed my fiancé goodbye, and left the house. As I opened the front door, I cautiously looked around. I looked down the street to see if anyone was sitting in a car watching, but there were no cars in sight. Since I hadn't seen anyone, I rushed to my car. Before I got in, I checked the back seat. I'm not normally one to worry about a murderer in my car, but these messages were really getting to me. I jumped in the driver's seat, throwing my bag to the passenger side. As I locked the doors, I felt my phone buzz again. I prayed and prayed that it was my fiancé telling me I left something inside. Of course, it wasn't. Don't go, Jinx. They will be out tonight. Tentatively, I started the car and began my drive to work. It's a short drive, and my head was so wrapped up in the situation that I barely remember clocking in. The building manager looked at me, asking if I was alright. I nodded and kept walking. What was I supposed to say? Yeah, everything is wonderful. Just trying to ignore some strange messages telling me not to come here. No, I decided to keep it to myself. The games room was full of people playing pool and ping pong, and the attached cafe was packed with a pre-party crowd. This is how it typically is. Students buy their mixers for the parties at the frat houses, then they fill up on greasy burgers and pizza. I usually have a couple people stay all the way till close playing a game. Not this night. Aside from the cafe workers, the BM, and me, the building was empty by 10 p.m. The BM came by and made a sarcastic comment about it being a lively night in the games room. She started to walk away, but I stopped her. Uh, Taylor, wait up a minute. Do you mind if I ask you something? She started walking back and said, Sure. So, I got some strange text messages earlier. I don't know the number, but the person kept telling me not to come into work tonight. They've kind of got me stressed. I'm being silly, right? Taylor slowly nodded her head, furrowing her brow. She probably thought I was crazy. Is there something going on tonight? One of the messages just said something about them being out tonight. James, I think someone's playing a prank on you. Don't worry about it. We only have a few hours left and then we get to sleep. I would have felt much better if I hadn't felt my phone vibrate during our conversation. I refused to look this time. I tried to put my mind elsewhere. I scrolled through my Facebook feed, but all I could think of was the message on my phone. I finally looked. You shouldn't have told her. They will be coming for her now. You need to make sure you leave work before 1 a.m. I figured I would try messaging back again, and I was surprised when it worked. After some time passed, I got a response. I said, why? Why do I need to leave work by 1 a.m.? After some time passed, I got a response. They're coming. If you make it, meet me tomorrow outside the games room. Make sure you get there before it opens. If I make it? What the hell does that mean? I frantically tapped the keys on my phone, but my messages wouldn't send. I felt alone. 
I hadn't seen Taylor in a while, so I tried calling the BM cell. Straight to voicemail. The staff from the cafe had gone home early since there weren't any students there. Fear set in. I figured I would try calling Taylor in a bit. Maybe she was in the bathroom or something. It's now about 12.45 and I haven't seen Taylor since our conversation earlier. I've called both the BM phone and the desk phone that she should be near. I've closed the game room and I'm waiting for her to come lock the door behind me. I need to get out of here before 1am and I only have a few minutes. I'm probably just going to have to leave. I don't have time to go looking for her. I'll update sometime soon. That is, if I make it, whatever the hell that means. I'm sorry that I haven't responded at all. I've been held up all day, but I'll get to that in a minute. Yes, I am fine. I never encountered them last night. I also never found Taylor before I left work. I should have never said anything to her. Let me tell you what happened today. You're gonna hate me. For starters, I didn't sleep well last night. I flew home, ran inside, and locked the door behind me. I didn't wake my fiance. I wouldn't want to tell her anyway. They might come for her if I did. All I could do was wait. It's kind of hard to sleep after this kind of thing happens. I waited for another message from my mysterious friend, if he or she could even be called a friend. I've started calling him or her Pariah. I read it in a comic book once. Pariah was trying to warn all the superheroes about some impending doom. It seemed fitting. Eventually, I took some sleeping pills, but I waited in agony until they kicked in. I thought about Taylor. I barely knew her. The game room is pretty far away from the desk where the rest of her staff sits, so, so I never have much interaction with the other workers. Somewhere among my visions of Taylor being kidnapped or murdered, I fell asleep. When I woke up this morning, I didn't even question if it had been a dream. I knew it was true. My fiancé woke up around the same time. Rubbing her eyes, she said, Morning, babe. How was work? Did you have a quiet night? Yeah, it was quiet. Cleared out pretty early. Mm, that's good. Those are nights you like, right? You get to play some RuneScape? She said, stretching and getting out of bed. I didn't move for a while. What did you do for four hours? Did you get any essays graded? No, I didn't get any. I just kind of... waited. Waited? Are you feeling okay? You seem spacey. Yeah, I'm good, babe. Just tired. I remember Pariah's message about meeting at the games room if I made it. Actually, I gotta get back to the games room. I left something there. I might run some errands after that, too. I pulled my shirt over my head, contemplating a shower. Didn't have time. Well, don't be gone too long. You'll never get those essays graded in time if you keep running errands. She even made the air quotes with her fingers. Don't forget, you work tonight, too. I paused for a moment. Yeah, work. Six to nine, right? Yep. You could switch with the closer, though. It would get you some extra money. Eh, I don't know if that's such a good idea. I'm pretty tired, and it's only 7.25 more. She narrowed her eyes at me. I could tell she was getting ready to lecture me about our wedding coming, how we needed to save up more money. Instead, she just smiled and said, Money's money, baby. Do what you want, though. I'll think about it. I really gotta get going now. Love you. I was out the door before I could hear her say it back. The game room opens at noon on the weekends. It was 11.40 a.m. when I walked out. I had to hurry if I was going to meet up with Pariah. I got in the doors by the games room, and I lost all feeling in my body when I saw who was there. There were two police officers talking to one of the non-student managers of the building, Sarah. Sarah is the boss of all of us, and she's never in on Saturdays. One of the police officers was writing in a small notebook, and the other one looked to be asking questions. Sarah had been crying. I prayed this wasn't about Taylor. She saw me and yelled, James! Officers, this is James. He was working last night with Taylor. I approached slowly, cursing to myself. I asked, What's going on? The officer who was asking the questions turned to me. Morning, son. You mind if we ask you a couple questions? I must have looked like I was going to pass out. I somehow found my voice and said, No, not at all. Is everything okay? James, can you tell us about last night? How did things go here? I told the officers all about last night. I told them how it cleared out around 10pm. I told them about the cafe staff leaving early. None of this seemed to interest them. 
In a soft yet serious tone, he said, When was the last time you saw Taylor? The officer stopped writing in his notebook and raised his eyes to me. Sarah burst into tears. The officer who had turned towards me started at me. He towered over me. I was terrified. He laid a hand on my shoulder in an attempt to comfort me. He must have been able to tell I was shitting my pants. I did my best to tell him about her coming into the games room to check up on me, but my voice was quivering. I couldn't get a complete sentence out to save my life. Eventually, the officer stopped me. Why don't we go sit down? We can get you a cup of water. Take a minute to collect your thoughts. He said this with genuine comfort. I felt safe. We moved into the cafe and sat down at a booth. I was finally able to tell the officers and Sarah all about last night. I told them that after she had come to the games room, I hadn't seen her. I did not tell them about Pariah and the text messages. I know that sounds irresponsible, but Pariah told me that they were going after Taylor after I had told her. I can't endanger the lives of anyone else. The officers told me they would need to take me to the station for a while. They needed to review the camera surveillance of the building last night. Finally, I just blurted out, Will you just tell me what's going on? Sarah wailed. She actually wailed and threw her face into her hands. The officer who wasn't writing moved to comfort Sarah. I should have known. In a way, I think I did know, but I needed someone to say it. We believe Taylor's, uh, remains were found this morning. The building manager for the morning had reported that the doors were never locked from last night. In fact, the lights were all left on as well. As he was making his rounds, he found... Well, he found a building manager's work uniform and some bones in the basement. All of it was covered in blood. We're still waiting for confirmation, but we are fairly sure it's Taylor. Her boyfriend said she never came home last night as well. I was astonished. After some time, I said, It's Taylor. They all waited for me to go on. I hadn't seen her for most of the night. I waited for her for a while before leaving. But I figured she would just see I left. I figured she would get the door. There was no one else in here besides us. They all shifted awkwardly, but no one said anything still. You think I had something to do with this, don't you? No one's accusing you of anything. We're just going to need you to cooperate. We'll take you to the station with us and we can get things straightened out there. We're going to look at the security footage to see if we can find anything out. Sound good with you? Yeah, sounds good. I knew that if they looked at the footage, they would see me sitting at the games room desk all night. There's a camera that points right at the desk. There are no cameras in the basement, though. At least, I don't think there are. The basement is unfinished. Not many people will go down there. I know the ballroom team practices down there, but that's just because of the big space. I knew they would have to show up on the cameras upstairs. All the building's entrances have cameras. They'll see them. This can all be over. During my stay at the police station, the officers treated me very well. They were nice enough not to put me in an interrogation room. They frequently asked if I was hungry or if I wanted coffee. I didn't. I wanted to leave. In the end, I was released. They watched all four hours of the footage of me sitting at the games room desk. They watched me talking to Taylor probably four or five times. They even asked me to narrate the exchange between the two of us. All camera footage to the doors of the building cut out shortly before Taylor left the games room. In fact, every camera in the building except the games room one cut out after she left. I'm still not really sure why they let me leave, but I left my phone number for them. They told me to stay in town, too. <laughs> no problems there. Now is about the time that I became even more irresponsible. As I sat in the police station parking lot, I called the games room attendant that was closing tonight and begged them to switch shifts with me. She happily gave up the shift. I needed Pariah to contact me. I needed to find out more about them. Sure enough, I soon received a message from Pariah. <laughs> You irresponsible fool! What are you doing? Are you trying to get yourself killed? I thought for a moment before I responded. Finally, I said, I need to know about them, the people you say are coming. Who are they? What do they want? <coughs> I was surprised when I received such a quick response. There's nothing to say. They're just like you and me. They are hungry. They're pissed that you got away. They're coming. You can't trust anyone but me, not even your fiancé. I sent a few more messages to Pariah after that, saying my fiancé would never betray me. The messages went through, but I never received a response. Screw it. I went home to wait until work, graded some essays, 
My fiance was happy to hear that I would be making an extra 725. It's 12.55 a.m. at work. I'm staying here. I need to know. It may sound silly, but I've got a knife with me. I'm ready. I told the BM to go home. I promised I would lock the door up behind him. He left his keys with me. He was happy to leave early. I closed the game room and I've locked myself in the back office. I've got my knife ready and I'm sitting with my back against the door. Two minutes left. The waiting is killing me. I have the camera feed pulled up on the desktop in the office. I can see it from where I'm sitting. One minute left. The feed blinks for a second, but it doesn't cut out. Maybe a coincidence? Don't be stupid. I don't know. I've moved away from the door. I'm waiting. I can hear someone outside the door, followed by a knock. They knocked? James? James, it's me! Open up! That voice. I know it's going to be okay. I'm safe. She'd never betray me. James? James? Open up! Thank you.